You're watching the Hollywood Review. My name is Tony Boldy. We are on the road. We left the studio and we're doing some fun interviews. We're here at an exhibition. It's going to be on Thursday, but today is Tuesday and we're interviewing some wonderful artists here. They're here to my right. We have Hermann, not Herman, from Germany. Herman Letterly. Good to meet you. Tony. Good to meet you too. I'm honored to be here. And we have Jay here, Jay Silverman. Is that correct? correct yeah. And you do multiple things. You're a photographer, a director, and you've gotten into the art world as an artist. Am I correct? Correct. So um, what are we looking at here in the studio? And we're going to show you guys some of these paintings as we go along here. But um, just kind of give me some backstory on who you are and, and why we're here today. What's happening? I, I think the cathartic aspect of this is our curator, Susan, mm -hmm. who has done a magnificent job, introduced me to Herman. Here. Herman. I'm just so blown away by his work. Um, we put together a package thing here where right. there's his work, uh, some of my work. Um, my work is sketching, right. and it's a big part of uh, So you, me. you're showing yeah. your work and his work, and you couldn't be more polar opposites, correct? And isn't that the, what's so. the name of the show here? It's, it's called... Apparent Opposites, I think. Apparent yeah. Opposites. And it couldn't be more apparent, That's, that's correct. correct. Well, you know, looking at Herman over here, you can see why. Well, there you go. Oh. So, <laughs> you're becoming good friends. How long have you known uh, each other? I, Three days. Each other. <laughs> I can tell. So let's get into We're your We're still best. getting to know each other. <laughs> so, uh, Herman, how did you get into um, what you do today as far as being an artist? I went to school for it like 30 years ago what in, at the Art Institute in San Francisco. I okay. studied filmmaking, but I also studied painting. So Right. So you're just a hack. <laughs> You're professionally trained, in other words. I always liked painting. I often did that throughout uh, my career. So one of your paintings, I think, is behind us, correct? Yes. So w what is this? It looks like a bunch of, um, to me, it's like strips. Is this, is, yes, am I correct, correct in that? Yeah, you? yeah, absolutely correct. It's, so how did you strips create of this? paintings which are cut out of uh, original paintings are painted, mm -hmm. but the same size. Then they're cut and put, to, uh, put uh, together on a new canvas. So how many different create. canvases would you say this on particular painting? On this particular painting? one behind it, I think you have four different canvases. So like if you had to, you could put this back together into four different paintings? Yes, I could, but that would be tough because <laughs> it's pretty much permanent now. <laughs> exactly. You know, I know art, uh, the little bit I know about yeah. art is that it's, it's the eye of the beholder. It's the interpretation of the feeling it, uh, you feel as a, as a person when you view it. What do you feel when you see your own work? I look at it mostly as paint, mm -hmm. just the beauty of paint itself. You mean in the, the way the colors reflect off the light back into your eyes? Or, or the, the actual medium, like you would look at marble, granite, diamonds, right. or steel. And uh, look at paint as a medium. Oil which based? Can, or, oil based, okay. yes. And I think if you look at my work, you see that I spend a lot of time making the actual medium of paint look beautiful and as, at its best. So I heard this old story where there's two groups and they took yeah. a, built clay pots. And one of the groups had to make the best clay pot they could make and the yeah. other group had to make as many as they could make. Okay. Who made the best clay pot? Well, both of them did, right? Well, according to this story, the one that made as many as they could, then they didn't put restraints on them. The one that tried to make the best one never even made one. Oh, all right. So like with that being said, Jay, that leads me into you. As a director, do you do your own storyboards? You know, interestingly enough, I'm not a good storyboard artist. I find oh, that shocking. That, I, find <laughs> I find that, really that very unbelievable. shocking. Yeah, it's if you look at some of his work here, they actually look like storyboards. I think well, they're born it's, it's, storyboard it's, artists. <laughs> they're, they're cartoony characters, but uh, it's funny because if you know anything about the pre-production process, whether you're making a movie or you're making a commercial or a TV show, you spend a lot of time communicating on the phone. And yeah. all my sketches are created while I'm on the phone. Oh, doodles. They're all doodles. No, you and, told me somebody yeah. in your life wanted you just to showcase your doodles and that's sell correct. your doodles. And that's and, what and we're seeing Su here. Susan uh, the curator, um, yeah. Velez said to me, you have to show your work. And I give it away to friends and family. And, and uh, of course, one of the best stories I've ever done is I have a very good friend who's a, a cartoonist for... Um, 
for the New Yorker, and um, we used to go out cartooning when I was in my 20s, and I would sit and sketch and look and sketch, and the woman at the bar would be so impressed, and then I'd show her the picture, and she'd walk away, you know, <laughs> because they were cartoons, you know, right. they weren't. Well, and some yeah. of these that I've looked at before we started taping, yeah. I saw some Simpsons references. Did you, you said you might have known somebody Well, involved. I actually lived very close to the Simpson, uh, the guy, the actual um, Matt, artist. Gr Matt Groening, and, right. wow. um, in, in the Venice area when I was younger, and I don't think that they're influenced by him, but they are influenced by my initial attempt to try to make actual normal people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, what I was trying to get is he stole your work. He must have stolen my <laughs> work. <laughs> and you need it. Like you <laughs> There's no question about so that. So how long have you been doing this? 50 I've, been years? I've been cartooning for my right. entire career. So yeah. if, you, if you do art, do you build your own book? So if you sell something, you're not losing part it's of your collection? It's just the beginning. He discovered a new career. This is <laughs> <laughs> Susan you know, and I, I, I talked him into showing it publicly the Thank first you. time. And this is one of his first shows? This, this is, is first my first show. show. And this is why wow. the title Apparent Opposites really comes in handy yeah. because it is opposite to what he does normally. You guys gotten into the aspect of selling and what the value is and how you price something? Well, really? well he, he's a, you know, obviously a fine artist for many years mm. and for me that's all new. So he's given me some wisdom, mm. but uh, uh, essentially they're this, this event is in, in part to benefit uh, a, a charity called Lipstick Angels, right. which specializes, which we thought when we created this association, that it would be a great thing to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Well, since we're on this topic, yeah. when and where is this event? The event takes place this Thursday, yeah. uh, March 30th, between 6 and 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We're going to have live music, and interestingly enough, uh, I just have to pitch my composer for my new film, he's going to be playing with uh, four of his uh, string players. Really? Uh, part of the themes to some of the movies I've made. Wow. Now is there a cost to come to the event? Come here, get inspired, and possibly uh, donate to the Lipstick uh, Angels. Right. Because that's the, uh, our goal. We call them love donations. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, I think art is such a, a magnificent way to give back mm -hmm. because in, in in the case of Herman, he's got uh, lithos of one of the best pieces that I think he's done, mm -hmm. besides this new stuff. Right. And he's uh, he's donating, uh, I think, yeah. a set of three of those oh, really? uh, to the yeah. charity. They're actually wow. done by a very famous uh, lithographer in Germany, okay. who's done all the major artists in the world. We're going to take a break here. We're going to walk around and look at some of your photos. Okay. You're going to give me a little bit more backstory in each one. And then we might come back and get another interview. So again, you're watching uh, The Hollywood Review on the road. My name is Tony Boldy, and we have Jay, and we have Herman. So, you guys, thanks for watching. We'll be right back. So, we were talking, and you guys mentioned Lipstick Angels. Now, what is Lipstick Angels? Lipstick Angels is a, is a charity we thought was really appropriate to align this exhibit with because it's indirectly, since the, the exhibit takes place on a stage, we all come from a film background. Um, th what they do is quite extraordinary. They work in hospitals and provide makeup and hair for uh, women that are um, going through chemotherapy and uh, cancer therapy. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a feeling of dignity and, and an awakening of, uh, of tools that we all use every day in our field to make people um, you know, go through uh, one of the most difficult challenges of their life with um, some some positive. Right. Well, I just I just read something, and of course on Facebook, so you don't know what you believe. But they said they came up with these new goggles, these Google goggles, that they can actually start seeing the cancer cells before you know, so we can get a jump on it. And I hope it's real. You know, like I said, social media never know what's real and it's not real. But you know, that's why we're trying to provide right. money for these research causes. And also, this um, you know, lipstick angel is uh, is trying to inspire people to uh, through beauty mm -hmm. to have a new lease on life. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's what art's all about. Right. You know? Well, we were involved uh, with this beautiful woman that had done a documentary on hair and how people identify all around the world with their hair. And so they agreed to try to see what it was like to cut their hair off or change their hairstyle or color. And the producer was actually shocked to find out how attached her identity was 
to her hair. Mm. So you can only Look at imagine. Me. Well, well, there you go. But it's, it's yeah. a great look. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, I'm so, going through that transition right, right. this moment. <laughs> so it's a wonderful cause, and I see you're holding the pamphlet yeah. here, and I, I'm assuming you've shown me this um, before we were filming, yeah. some of your artwork, yeah. but on the back, I think it says, oh, well, it's the, all the artists. Now, you took these photos? No, these are done by Cora Silverman, your my daughter. daughter. Okay, that's, that's correct. To show you. And she's also going to be at the exhibit on yes. Thursday. Now, I don't know how much you want to get into her backstory and what her still photography means to you and to her. Um, it's a very powerful backstory, but it's. I, I, I think it's important. Um, the exhibit is, is is spread into three zones. One being Herman's artwork, which is which is right here and behind us. My sketches and her photography. Now Cora um, was kind enough to let me partake in in um, helping other people from five years ago when she got into trouble with bullying right. and. Um, and some pretty difficult challenges with sexual abuse. And I think her artwork, and as her father and as a photographer my entire career, I can say to you, is incredibly yes, uh, attached strong. and strong to her identity. Right. And this is one way for her to, I think... Um, um, I'm sure it's a form of expression. It's not only just a form of expression, but I think uh, uh, an, an incredible opportunity for her to to actually cathartically right. share, and um, I think anybody that's been abused um, finds themselves in a situation where they either can utilize that in a positive way right. and have something that comes from it, like in this particular case, give back. Well, when you look at these, uh, they're black and white photos, and that one's kind of a, a saturated color, if I'm correct. No, they're all black and white. Okay, there's, well then there's some, so are, much some are a little golden, a uh, little uh, sepia. Yeah, well, when, yeah. when you come and see these close up, I mean, I'm, I'm sure even the way we're trying to capture it is not doing it justice. You have to see this in person. But what, what I see, you can feel, you can just feel the truth coming through the still photos. Correct. And even the sketches. I mean, you say you make these sketches while you are doodles while you're Correct. producing your other things. And, I mean, it's just amazing work. And, you know, somebody obviously recognized that, and I'm sure many other people will recognize it as well, this being your first... Uh, exhibit. This is exciting to be part of. It's very exciting. So we encourage our viewers, if they can, come to LA and come check this uh, exhibit yes. out. It's again, remind them, it's Thursday. It's Thursday, March 30th, between 6 and 9 at Silverman Productions in Hollywood. Right. So, going uh, right in the heart of Hollywood. Hollywood right. proper. Yeah. So, yeah. And so this stuff back here, when it's not on display at the exhibit, how can people find you? Is there a website? Is there it's a gallery a they can go to? What's your website? website? It's called artbullet.com, mm -hmm. and uh, that features my work. And um, there's a website for you as well. Uh, JSilverman.com. And there's a website for uh, uh, CoraSilverman.com. Silverman. And does your website include your still photography and your yeah, it films does. and it commercials does. and all things? I think also this is not a traditional show like you would expect in the gallery mm -hmm. or something because we're on a film stage. We're using film props right. and we're using them in a very production design way to create a space to show the artwork. So right. it is very unique kind of you can feel it when you walk in, so uh, I encourage you guys to walk in and check it out as well. I think it's, it's, it's very extraordinary because Herman here, as an artist, uh, you're looking at this is his work today. This is his new work. You're seeing something that is dimensional, textural, and incredibly um, diverse because it's, like he mentioned, three pieces of art that are combined in a very... Is it four? A four. Well, yeah. behind us, it's four. Oh, okay. four. Yeah. Very meticulous. And then in my work, uh, you know, and I'm saying this not as a, as a point of reference only, um, I, I had a, a young daughter that was born at less than two pounds, and I was on the phone sometimes hours and hours uh, coping with uh, her survival. And a lot of these sketches represent those two, three hours on the phone while I'm listening to doctors speak about you know, the, the future that lies with my daughter. And thank God I'm here to say that she's doing great, but it was not an easy task. And again, using art cathartically to, um, to demonstrate uh, you know, sharing. So when I talked to you earlier, you had not yet named me. Have you decided on a name yet? I think we did. We well, did name well, it. you want to I feel think, that now? Well, the, the, I have this disdain for cigarette smoke. 
So there's, uh, there's a matchstick in a lot of my drawings. Okay. Uh, it's kind of the rebellion. So some of them are, are, uh, are going to be related to the matchstick. And, and then there's a lot of noses. <laughs> there, there is a lot, there of is lot of noses. So, you know, um, I think we created a, uh, a title for the big one there. It's... Uh, nosy. Nosy, yeah. Nosy. Nice one. Yeah. Well, there you go. We're revealing it here on the show, the Hollywood Review. And uh, so we're going to call it Nosy for this week. Does that work for you? Thank you. That's no, thank you. Yeah. Well, we're honored to be here. There's a lot more questions I want to ask you, but I'd like to walk around the studio okay. uh, with you and also with the curator, Susan. Okay. And, and just get as much backstory on this and, and really try to um, help the viewer when they get here to understand what to look for. Now, again, with me, with art, it's, it's a feeling from all the artists I've spoken to. But is there something you would encourage them to look for, or is it just feel it and find it on your own? You know, you know it's, it's a fascinating thing uh, about art, because I remember buying my first piece of art, and it was a woman's lips this close, and she's making moves, and I walked by the art five times, and then I realized she's saying something, and then by the time I had dinner and came back and looked at that piece of art again, I realized she was saying A-E-I-O-U. So I was moved by that, and in the same way that I'm moved by Herman's work, because as you look at it and you digest it, it becomes something that it's not at the beginning. It might initially look like water, it might, and it has nothing to do with water. But what's cool about art is it's interpretable on so many different levels for a different, everybody interprets it differently. Right. And that's what I find inspiring about his work. And if he wasn't sitting next to me, I'd still say that. Good friends. Three days is, is going to turn into a lifetime, I think. Well, he's guys. going to help me lift those walls back <laughs> where they came from. Oh, right. You guys, yeah, you built this set. Well, this is, this is a beautiful display. I'm very Thank honored you. to be here. I'm happy to have you guys on the Hollywood Review. There's a lot more that we want to get in depth with, so we're going to walk around the studio. Perfect. So you guys are open to that. All right, so you guys keep watching. You're watching the Hollywood Review. My name is Tony Boldy, and we have Jay here, Jay Silverman, and we have Herman Letterly. And they're the artist along with your daughter who will be here on Thursday. So uh, be sure to come check out the gallery. We're very excited to have you guys here and very glad to have you guys in LA. So thank you. All right, we'll be thank back. You. I'm Herman Lederly and I'm the artist of the paintings, which is called Adaptations. Tony. Herman, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, so Thanks you were telling me a little bit about this particular painting, that yes. actually this particular green right here, depending on what side you're on, will actually disappear. Yes. So yes. What, what form of, um, of painting is this? Uh, the new paintings here, I use interference paint, which is basically from, it is um, polarized paint, so you see it in one right. angle, it gives you a different color. So you mentioned that, like race cars, when uh, yes. dragsters, they would drive by, it'd be one color coming and going, it'd be another color? I know. So That's that was the concept of what you that, did here? The, these paintings, because they're already made out of two canvases put together, I wanted to add a third dimension, which is when you shift the perspective, the point of view, that you actually get a different view, uh, uh, color. And so there's multiple colors in yes, here, multiple, and colors multiple in strips it. of other and canvases. For, a, say, for, for example, this the painting behind you starts out at the canvas, has these graphics painted wow. underneath, and then the stripes are added on top of it from the paintings, right. and you end up with this. So if you look at these long enough, you're, you're going to see things change. You're, I mean, yes. you're, it's kind of like that 3D painting where it's like you stare at it long enough yeah. you start seeing other I things. I think you can see a lot of different uh, uh, right. depth. And how long did it take for you to come up with this style of painting? Um, two years ago I started a series which involved older paintings cut up and uh, married with new paintings and it was called Adaptation, took it to Germany and this evolved that it, uh, the paintings are all new. It doesn't involve old paintings. And so this is Cielo, meaning sky. Sky. And so this and is your sky series. Terra, meaning uh, earth. Right. And we got O, standing for water. Right. Wow. And it, go, it just keeps going and going and yes. going. Well, we're honored to be here. We're excited to come to the art showing at the gallery ex, uh, exhibit. Yeah. And we're with Herman Letterly. So uh, we're going to walk around the studio a little bit. You guys yeah. want to go this way with us? Right. All right, let's check it out. So what do we have here? We have a nice display. And these are all sketches you've been working on for how many years? Well, these, some of these sketches go back 20 years. You can see by the sketch pad, this is my old logo, this is my right. new logo. Wow. And I think what I've tried to do is put up a grouping. I have hundreds of these. 
Uh, usually, uh, a sketch like this takes a half a day to a day to, to create. Right. So, well, now that you know yeah. you're making money from your sketches, are you a little more concerned <laughs> when you doodle? I mean, does that influence okay. you? Let me correct you right there. I'm making money for charity from my oh, okay. sketches. Okay, yeah, absolutely. That's important. Very important. With I'm lipstick not angels, in right? Commerce right. right. Now. Okay, but does that influence your doodles a little bit? It no, does. As a matter of fact, let's go down here. If you look at these down here, these were created last week <laughs> when I knew that I had to create a section of 20. Okay. And what's exciting about it is, is that, you know, my, 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 uh, my sketch evolved, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of cool. That's now, could you ever see these turning into a character like The Simpsons where you have your own animated show? God, I, it would be a pretty insane character. It'd be look pretty at this cool. guy right here. I would love to see it. <laughs> I, could, I could see you doing it. You know, it's not often that you reflect on the way your mind right. um, uh, kind of digests mm -hmm. challenges. Some of these, and I'll tell you right off the top, this one here and this one here, which was created in 2015, right. was really a reflection of a moment where I was learning in great depth some of the challenges I was dealing with right. with a family challenge. Right. And, uh, which is a serious moment, but yeah. the comedic side of me wants to go, have you shown that to a therapist? And what did they say I, about that? I think that? I don't need to show it to a therapist. <laughs> I can tell you this, this, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have survived. Right, exactly. So I make light of situations that can yeah. be very heavy. So, um, so over here, we have some of your daughter's still photography. Can That's you correct. go over here and show me a little Absolutely. bit about that? Absolutely. Okay. Well, here, you're saying these are black and white, but they look colored. These are slightly sepia. Yeah. Okay. Mostly all the colors have been drawn out. These over here, are definitely clearly black and white. Right, and you can see the intensity in the shots. Like, was this um, recently or was this after the unfortunate situation? This is after. This, uh, Cora Silverman's photography, ironically, no different than Herman. Right. They both went to the Art Institute in San Francisco. Oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, so yeah. she's, she's trained. She's, she's trained. Hey, I'll tell you something that's fascinating is when I was 17, my mentor was a guy named Jim Wood. And uh, ironically now, uh, 35 years later, he becomes my daughter's mentor. Well, it's kind of cool. Yeah. He's a, one of the professors at the Art Institute in photography. Right. So you just recently met Herman, one of the other um, exhibits here. Uh, and he had sold, I guess, some stuff to Ringo Starr. How, yeah. does, how does that feel? Are you, are you hoping to... Are you to, trying to humiliate no, me? I'm trying, I'm trying to inspire you because you said this is your first showing. This is my first showing. But it's and absolutely I stunning. already can tell you. And this is very exciting that I sold three pieces over the weekend to a shoe king right. in um, Spain. Where there's one, there's ten. So he, that made a, he made a special trip from Spain right. to check out this exhibit right. and bought three of my pieces. So I'm, I'm sure you'll sell many, many, many. Well, I'm, it's all goes to charity. So I'm very excited. wonderful. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. So while well, this stuff is just absolutely beautiful, it's stunning, it's powerful, and like I said, you just can't, you have to be here to really capture what I'm witnessing and feeling right now. But um, we're honored to have um, Hollywood of You come into your space and I try to help get some more people to come check out the show. So again, you're watching the Hollywood Review, I'm Tony Boldy, and this is a great uh, exhibition called? It's called, are you ready for this, Herman? Apparent opposites. Okay, Apparent ask opposites. the question again. <laughs> so, uh, we're honored, this is Hollywood Review. My name is Tony Boldy, and we're honored to be in your space. And we're at the exhibit called Apparent Opposites, which is very apparent. So, thank you. And uh, we're going to go check out the studio. But again, you guys come check it out yourself. And we're honored to, to be part of this. So, thank, thank you so much. Wonderful.